It takes excellence to get past the round of 32. The Eiffman had to go on the road to play Springfield College. Springfield came in 26 and one. Their lone defeat coming at the hands of Williams earlier in the season. And the Eiffman soon handed Springfield its second loss of the year. Matt Hunt scored 23. Senior Tri-Captain Grant Farmer from Mercer Island, Washington, a suburb of Seattle, added six. And Nigello, a team high 30. Williams was on its way to the Sweet 16. Division three basketball to us is having fun, enjoying the experience, and teaching them about competition. Now, you may not see the fastest guys, you may not see the strongest guys, um, but you're gonna see two teams who want it more than anyone else. Um, and I think, you know, that's really Division three sports is, you know, really about people who are playing for the game and for the competition, really for nothing else. Getting back to the Final Four would be no easy task. Playing in Canton, New York on the home floor of St. Lawrence University, once again, Williams would have to exact revenge on a team they had lost to in the regular season. But Hamilton, renowned for its rebounding, lost the battle on the glass, and Williams rebounded from its earlier loss with a convincing 90-69 win. Nigello scored 25, McGuire and Hunt 16 apiece, and junior Jimmy Frew from Worcester, Massachusetts poured in 18 points to go along with five assists. Behind the play of its three seniors, Williams was on its way to the final eight. To look up to those guys is really a source of inspiration for all of us. I mean, we know the hard work that they've put in for four years, and a part of us really wants to win for them because we know how much they've given to the program, and we want to see them succeed. To get back to the Final Four, Williams needed to beat the host team, St. Lawrence. Though the home fans outnumbered Williams' cheering section by at least two to one, the Williams fans were louder. They had more to cheer about. Michael Nagello scored 35, including 20 in the first half. And if there was ever any question as to who the nation's best Division III player happened to be, it was answered that day. Nigella, who chose Williams over opportunities in the Ivy League, displayed why he was able to set school records with 2,002 points and 786 rebounds. You know, in the Ivies, you have a couple big games each year, but, you know, then in the end, you're basically playing for the Ivy League championship and, you know, a chance to get bounced in the first round of the NCAA tournament. So, you know, for us, I just feel like even though it's Division Three, we're playing for something bigger than that. When you look at him, you look at someone who, on a given night, can put us on his back and carry us. And that's, that's rare, you know, for a coach to, to, to have a player of that caliber. It's a privilege to coach someone of that caliber, and, uh, and he's a special kid. Behind Nigello, Williams beat St. Lawrence, and they were on their way back to the Final Four the destination they had their sights set on when the season began. I think now that sort of as we've been here, our uh, progress into the tournament has, um, has gotten to the point now where we're kind of taking another step each year. Um, and last year, you know, we made it to the final, final four, kind of a game away from the national championship game. And so I think it's inevitable for the guys and the coaches um, to really see that as our, as our ultimate goal. Each one of those young men, Grant Farmer and Brendan McGuire and Mike Nigello, has brought something very unique. But what they brought collectively was a desire to play at the national level and to compete for a national championship. In Salem, Virginia, the host site for the Division III Final Four, Nigello was honored with the first ever Jostens Award given to the student athlete with at least a 3.0 grade point average who demonstrates ability in basketball and a commitment to the community. But Nigello is not the only senior Harry Sheehy will miss. Brendan McGuire scored more than 800 points in his career and grabbed more than 400 rebounds. Brendan McGuire, I remember last year coming up after the Rowan game when we wanted to go to the Final Four and everybody was talking about the game and Rowan and I sat down in my office and I said to my wife Connie, I said, you know what really surprised me or thrills me is Brendan McGuire. 18 points and 10 rebounds against the number one or number two team in the country. And everybody was talking about the game and I was just sitting there thinking about how much Brendan McGuire had grown as a kid, mm -hmm. as a person, as a competitor. And most of McGuire's and Nigello's points came from the assists of fellow Tri-Captain Senior Grant Farmer. Farmer ended his career with 402 assists, just three shy of the school record. 
Grant, uh, you know, has been our point guard for four years, went through a, a really tough knee injury, and has come back to have an outstanding senior year, and we're very proud of him. With the big three leading the way, it was on to the final four against Wisconsin Platteville. The Eiffman came out smoking. Despite 18 points from Nigello and 20 from Matt Hunt, Platteville won the game 82 to 68. But there was a consolation for Williams, a consolation game with Wilkes College from Pennsylvania. Determined to end their careers with a win, the seniors played their hearts out. Nigello scored 38 points and finished with a tournament record 178 points. Hunt continued to show his scoring ability as well with 24, and Williams ended its season with a 105-93 win and a third place finish in the NCAA tournament. For Coach Sheehy, saying goodbye to his three seniors won't be easy. They led Williams to back-to-back -back third place finishes at the NCAA tournament and a 26-4 senior season. And their 100 wins in four years will be the measuring stick by which all Williams classes are judged. That's the thing about coaching at Williams, that when you have three seniors of that quality who have really pushed themselves and pushed the rest of the program to, to heights uh, that are special, then you admire those people. And I look forward to watching each and every one of those guys uh, succeed in the future, because there certainly is nothing in the track record that says they're not going to. Relationships I've developed those three guys, just something I'm definitely going to miss next year. I mean, just the impact they've had on teaching me things as I become a player in this program has meant a lot. I'm going to take away the, the, my teammates. Uh, I think that uh, just everything that you share with them is fantastic. As a person, I have grown so much and I've learned so much from just the different personalities that all come together in that locker room and uh, it's going to be it's going to be tough to leave. There's so much that goes on off the court um, I mean the relationships that you form and that's sort of what's ultimately there um, at the end I mean you know you hope for great success and stuff but I mean I think obviously I'm going to look back on you know several games and, and just replay them in my mind a bunch of times after I'm out of here but um, you know it's the guys that you know I'm going to call up next year before their you know before their first practice and who I'm going to keep in contact with for years for years from now so um, yeah my teammates I think are the, the primary thing I'll remember. I think mainly I miss the guys um, you know for four years you spend so much time with them um, you know, there's just the, the brotherhood of, of being together all the time, you know, from the first day in September to hopefully the, the end of March. Um, I think that's the main thing, just the shared experience of going through everything together and winning and losing and just everything in between.